understand that after landing at the airport, uh, President Xi Jinping will be making a speech there. That is a highly anticipated speech. People look forward to seeing how he feels about Macau, what he thinks about the special administrative region, and the vision he has for Macau on this very special occasion. President Xi was there five years ago when the region marked its 15th anniversary of returning to motherland. We'll have all of the coverage there at the airport, including when the president steps out of the plane and makes a speech at the ground there. Professor Lau, I'm sorry for cutting you off there. You were saying? Actually, we, we know that actually the gaming uh, industry has been on, on the decline. I mean, there's uh, various reasons because of the, uh, the world economy is not so good. Mm. And because of the uh, CNOUS uh, uh, trade friction, there might be some kind of concern of uh, Western, uh, I mean, uh, travelers to come come into to China territory. Uh, so and I mean, fewer mainland tourists go to Macau these days. They yeah. are high rollers at all the Macau's casinos. Yeah. So actually, I mean, the diversification is uh, necessary. And, and I, I, I mean, tourism, uh, I mean, uh, finance and Chinese medicine, actually. Mm. And, and I think actually, I mean, the Macau government has really paid attention, paid attention to technology and innovation. Uh, this can could be a new engine for the economic development of Macau. For example, I, I know that in 2015, there was a Macau Young Entrepreneur Incubation Center mm. established in, in Macau. I mean, considering the limited land resources, technology, talents, and, and, and innovation should be a engine, should be a engine for future development for Macau. Mm. What potential, Mr. He, does Macau's economy hold for the future how could it diversify its economy? I think the most important thing is education and the scientific research and the talents. Uh, the central government has been providing strong support to Macau, mm. es establishing five national labs there covering microelectronics, uh, Chinese medicine, uh, smart city, and Internet of Things. Uh, that's very good. And also, the, I think the, with the development of Macau University and the more talents coming to Macau, Macau will develop in, co in close cooperation with the Guangdong province mm. in all these emerging industries and mm. new technologies. Because of the Greater Bay Area, people often draw comparison between Macau, Hong Kong, and other cities in Guangzhou. What advantages, Professor Liao, do you think Macau have? You were talking about uh, how it wants to have a presence in technology. Um, does it have the necessary advantages? What about talent-wise? Is Macau, um, does Macau have abundant talent value when it comes to diversification? That is exactly what we are talking about, what Macau can benefit mm. from the Great Bay Area plan. Mm. Because this plan is exactly designed to further integrate Hong Kong, Macau, Guang and Guangdong province. Mm. For example, we design new policies, new roads to facilitate like customers clearing, like movement of uh, personnel, including tenants, like I mean, mutual recogni recognition of uh, uh, qualified um, um, of, of professional qualifications, so that M Macau people can go working in, like in, in Guangzhou, in Shenzhen, very uh, conveniently, mm. and vice versa. So this could be a very good way to solve the problem of limited resources and limited uh, like personnel. This could be a very good opportunity for the further development of uh, Macau in, in a big map of the Great Bay Area. Mm. We're talking about just how scarce resources in Macau uh, are. This is a relatively small region, just 100 square kilometers with just over 600,000 people. Yeah. Mr. He, what do you think are the challenges and maybe disadvantages of Macau when it wants to integrate into this bigger, greater area in southern China as it looks to diversify its economy? I think the most important thing, yes, uh, really, because of the uh, limited size of the land and the population, uh, you cannot expect uh, Macau to become a large city or a huge economy. Mm. It's not uh, realistic and not necessary as well. Mm. But uh, Macau has this unique advantage. It's a gateway to the Portuguese-speaking countries, mm. and also an important 
international center for international conferences mm -hmm. and international organizations and also for tourism. So with this strong pillars, Macau can develop in close integration with Guangdong and the rest of the mainland China mm -hmm. to develop with its unique advantages in those advanced technologies and those sectors. But is there maybe competition? also between Macau and Hong Kong. People often compare the two because they're both former um, colonies. They are located close to each other. How would you say is the competitive edge that Macau has over Hong Kong when people make that comparison? Uh, yes, the competition is always there. Mm -hmm. If you compare two cities or if you compare two regions or compare Hong Kong with uh, Singapore, there are competitions as well, always. We don't, it's not uh, something uh, to, to be afraid of. I think uh, Macau has its unique advantages from Hong Kong mm. because it's gateway to the Portuguese speaking countries. That means not only those countries, but also with Portuguese, would, Portugal will get easy gateway to the European Union. With Brazil, we can get easy access to Latin America. This is unique with Macau. And also Macau, because of it's small, it's easier to handle, to develop with Guangdong province. Are they competitors? Are they partners? Is there anything that Macau could possibly learn from Hong Kong and its neighboring cities on the mainland? I guess it surely can learn from, uh, from Hong Kong. I mean, both, I mean, both experience and lessons. Mm. In terms of experience, I mean, rule of law and, and free uh, market, and these uh, could be the attractiveness of, uh, of both Hong Kong and Macau mm. as a, uh, I mean, unique places within the uh, territory of, uh, of mm. China. And one of the lessons I, I, I think Macau can learn from Hong Kong is that uh, it should always stick to one country principle so that, I mean, the world can have confidence in the future development of, uh, of uh, this uh, area and the central government can have confidence in this area and, and Macau people can have confidence for their future. So one country should be the foundation of uh, the one country to system uh, policy and for the uh, stability and prosperity of, uh, of Macau. We were talking about how well one country two systems has worked in Macau providing a stabilizing framework, an umbrella if you will, over the special administrative region. Mr. Hu, why do you think one country, two systems has, well, has worked extremely well and especially well in Macau? Uh, I think uh, if we look at the reality of Macau from the very beginning, uh, after, since Macau returned to the motherland or 20 years ago, there wasn't much different noise, uh, voices in Macau. They all supported one country, two systems. Mm. They all see themselves as part of China. Mm. So they see they support one country, they love China and they love Macau. Mm. So this is quite different from Hong Kong. Also, the foreign interfer interference and foreign intervention in Macau is very limited. Mm. It's completely different from that in Hong Kong. This is very important. And also in Macau, because of the size of the economy, the importance of the economy, it has more reliance, dependence on the mainland of China. Mm. Professor Liao, do you agree? Uh, yeah, I agree that actually um, Macau has uh, stick to the one country principle uh, from the very beginning. I want to emphasize one point, that is uh, both Macau and Hong Kong, they should not take the prosperity, stability, and development after return for granted. Their development, their prosperity, attributes a lot to the support from the central government under the one country, two systems policy. Mm. It is not come from nowhere. It actually is support from the central government, from the mainland, and from uh, the mainland people. Mm. So I guess Macau and Macau people uh, ha have understood this clearer that some of uh, maybe Hong Kong people, that they didn't, they have not taken this success of economic social development for granted. Mm. They are loyal to the motherland. They are faithful to the constitution and to the basic law. And this is 
the very foundation of the uh, comparative success of Macau's economic and social de development since its return to China, especially the stable situation of today. And their loyalty has really paid off. I mean, the central government has provided unwavering support in Macau yes. as a special administrative region. We are also hearing that there could be another stock exchange um, in Macau, Yuan denominated stock exchange there, to as part of uh, further support policies from the central government. Um, what do you anticipate that the central government will do at this point, on this very special occasion, to further its support to Macau? Professor Liao. Actually, as you have mentioned just now, the uh, uh, diversification of the economy is a necessary step for mm. the further development of Macau. So I think this stock exchange, as planned, is actually one of these considerations, for, because finance could be a, uh, a, a engine for the economic development, given the limited resources of, uh, of Macau. Mm. So I think, uh, besides gaming industry, uh, which is still the backbone of, of Macau's industry, I mean, finance, uh, tourism, and technology, and even Chinese medicine uh, could be all come together to form a big picture for the further development of Macau. And I think the central government should have an overall plan for this. And, and, and I believe President Xi will, will send some signal to, to Macau people uh, in, in his coming speech. And we'll keep hearing what he talks about in that speech coming up uh, later in this hour. Mr. Hu, what do you think? How will the central government continue to support Macau? First of all, I think the central government will reaffirm again and again one country, two, system, uh, two systems of policy mm. that will be adhered unchanged until the year 2049, which when Macau returned to China, uh, got 50 years. So this, for sure, to make it very clear again and again. Then, with specific efforts, will support Macau to develop its diverse innovation and the new emerging industries and education, so on and so forth. And more support from Guangdong province in the context of the Great Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Also, the central government will try to develop the capital market in Macau as a part of the international capital market, further integrating into the world market. Mm -hmm. Talking about integration of Macau into the world, its status as a special administrative region of China has elevated Macau's international yeah. status as well. It's more featured in movies, as we can see, and people really understand the concept of Las Vegas uh -huh. in the East. That's an easy concept to grasp for um, everybody else outside of China. And Macau really is part of 120 international organizations. Yes. That number was just 51 yes. before its return uh, more than to double China. In 20 years. Absolutely. Help us understand what's happened there. Why is Macau more involved in international affairs today? I think if we compare the history and experience of Las Vegas, we can find some similarities. I worked during my work uh, in San Francisco. I visited Las Vegas and attended trade fairs very often mm. as part of my work. I th to many people, to the understanding of many people, Las Vegas is only gaming uh, a spot. Mm. That's not enough. That's not correct. Las Vegas is also the hub of high tech and also the, the hub of international conferences and, and exhibitions. So Macau could follow could learn some experiences from Las Vegas and become attraction of international conferences, international tourism, and also high tech. Mm. Is Macau following in the footsteps of Las Vegas? Not what? following, but can learn something. Can learn something. What else can Macau learn from Las Vegas? Um, actually, I think uh, this, uh, what can Macau learn from Las Vegas is that it, it should have a very clear vision of its uh, I mean, features and its uh, for the qualifications and its mm. uh, specialties. This is most important because as we, as we know it's, it was built in, in, in a desert mm. with, without enough resources. But I mean, by grasping this, uh, this uh, uh, opportunity uh, of gaming industry actually grew into a, a worldwide a famous uh, city. So I mean, knowing its uh, advantages and disadvantages and build the uh, development plan focus its development on its, its advantages and win support from the uh, central government. I think it's uh, what Macau can learn 
from Las Vegas and other uh, successful uh, cities in the world. What about tourism in Macau? We know that uh, the tourists from mainland yes. have contributed to local economic growth there. Um, and in Macau has a unique blend of cultural heritage. What cultural cards does Macau have to play, Mr. He? I think uh, the highest, top number one attraction for tourism in Macau is the blend of different cultures, mm. the Western culture and the Eastern culture, the mm. foreign culture and the Chinese culture. Uh, you cannot find uh, similar cities in other parts of the world, or you can hardly find it, anything like that. That's it. You can go to, you can find easily the Christian church in Macau, which represented European history, and also many Chinese temples. Mm. And also, uh, you can find uh, the language is in Portuguese and also in Chinese. And the people live in harmony. People in different, with different culture, different beliefs, live in harmony. Which, in a very small place of the city, you can find a, a colorful blend of different cultures and history. So for people who haven't checked out Macau yet, there's a lot more than just gambling. And, and, and you know, say in your ca ca casino and resorts and all of that, what is your impression of tourism in Macau? Actually, as uh, Mr. He pointed out, there is a beautiful blend of uh, Western and Chinese culture in Macau. And another uh, interpretation of its attractiveness is that actually it, it's a witness of Chinese history mm. in the past, let's say, 100 years. How the Western people, how the Western colonists, together with Western thoughts and Western culture, have come to uh, China and have uh, conflicted, confronted with Chinese people and Chinese civilization, and how the local people with their culture, their identification, their spirits have survived from the invasion of, of Western uh, colonists and have sort of mixed their experience, their culture mm. with the uh, Western culture and have built such a beautiful city like Macau. I think there's actually a, a mixed uh, miniature of, uh, of uh, uh, Chinese history in, in, in the past uh, 100 years. This, this could be a uh, attractiveness of, uh, of Macau for uh, tourists. I find it very interesting when you said just now how people in Macau don't take things for granted. Um, they know that the, the support from the central government from Beijing is a big opportunity. And remember when Mr. Hua said that people in Macau love Macau and they love China. So I wonder, does that have to do with the education in Macau when it comes to educating yes. people about patriotism, about Macau being a part of China? Your thoughts? Yes, the schoolboys in Macau were educated in with Chinese history, the textbooks, Chinese history, mm. part of China and uh, their ancestors, how they lived, how they moved from the mainland to Macau. It's completely different from the primary school education in Hong Kong, mm. which taught only about the Europe, about the UK, about the history of Hong Kong with the UK. It's quite different. So the education from the school boys is the fundamental thing. Mm. I ask this because commentators and um, educators, all right, uh, if you're just joining us here on CGT and you're looking at live pictures coming in from Macau International Airport, and that plane has carried Chinese President Xi Jinping to Macau for celebrations marking the 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China. In just a few moments, we expect the Chinese president to step out of the plane. It looks like final preparation there. Chinese President Xi Jinping with his wife, Madame Pony Ron, arriving in Macau for a very packed schedule there. He will be attending all kinds of celebrations marking the 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China. Remember, he was here five years ago at the 15th anniversary. He will attend the inauguration ceremony of the fifth term government and also inspect, take the opportunity to inspect this special administrative region. That's the outgoing chief executive, Cui Xuan. The Chinese president will be present at the inauguration ceremony of the fifth term SAR government. The 
region will, of course, be welcoming a new chief executive and his government there. A very warm atmosphere on the ground there at Macau International Airport, where Chinese President Xi Jinping and his wife Peng Yuan have just touched down. We do understand that the Chinese president will be making a speech shortly, right there at the International Airport. That's a highly anticipated speech as people look for clues as to how he feels about Macau and if any new support policies will be given on this very special occasion. So keep it here on CGTN as we bring you comprehensive coverage of President Xi Jinping's three-day visit to Macau. A little bit of background information there. The Chinese government resumed the sovereignty over Macau in 1999 as a special administrative region, or an SAR, implementing the one country, two systems policy. After over 400 years of Portuguese colonial rule, December 20th this year marks the 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China. An inauguration ceremony of the Macau SAR will be held, and the city will welcome Hu Yat-sen as its new chief executive. If you're just joining us here on CGTN, you're looking at live pictures coming in from Macau International Airport, where the Chinese president is getting ready to make a speech. Let's listen in. Dear media friends, good afternoon. It's really a pleasure for me to come again to Macau, to this beautiful piece of land. I am not new to Macau. I could still remember in June 2000, when the Macau Special Administrative Region was established in less than half a year, I visited Macau. Ever since that, I paid several other visits to Macau, and the recent visit was traced back to five years ago. I was here to attend the celebration of the 15th anniversary of Macau's return to its motherland five years ago. And now it's the 20th anniversary, and I come back to Macau, and I'm excited for this day. As is known to all, during October the 1st, 2019, we held a grand celebration of the 70th anniversary of the establishment of the People's Republic of China. And just like that, the 20th anniversary of Macau's return to its motherland is another grand event at the heart of people across the whole nation. Here, on behalf of the central government, and people of all ethnicities in China, I would love to extend our warmest congratulations and best wishes to Macau compatriots. Since Macau's special administrative region returned to China in the past 20 years, it has acquired remarkable achievements and progress, which is also our pride. The central government and all Chinese people are taking a pride in it. Macau 
successfully practice the one country, two systems, and accumulated some experience and highlighted some features which is worthwhile to be organized and summarized. Now, for the blueprint of Macau's development in the future, we must join hands to depict it. In my next few days here in Macau, I'm more than happy to communicate with Macau people from all walks of lives about our common concerns. So that's all on my part. Thank you for coming. There, the Chinese President Xi Jinping making a speech right after landing at Macau International Airport. He affectionately mentioned previous visits, multiple previous visits to the city, including when he was in Macau five years ago to attend the 15th anniversary of Macau's return to China. He also took the opportunity to praise the many remarkable achievements that have taken place in Macau in the last 20 years. And President Xi Jinping also said that he looks forward to talking with people in, from all walks of life in Macau. There the Chinese president has landed in Macau. We'll keep you updated on all his agenda there in the special administrative region in the next few days. But for now, I'm returning to my studio guests here for more insight into President Xi's speech there. Professor Liao, let me start with you. He obviously looks like he's in a good mood. He affectionately talked about his multiple previous visits to Macau. Uh, your takeaway from this speech? This is a brave yet, I mean, meaningful speech. Mm, very uh, concise. Very concise, but we can interpret a lot from uh, uh, his speech. Mm. First, first, um, as you have mentioned, uh, President Xi is in a very good mood. He is proud of the uh, 20th anniversary, the development of, uh, of Macau. And actually, I noticed that actually he has com compared the uh, 20th anniversary of Macau's return to the uh, 17th anniversary of establishment of PRC. Mm. So both are very important things for Chinese people. Mm. So this is quite worthy of attention. Mm. And second, uh, second, he mentioned that both the uh, Chinese people and the central government are very proud of the development and success and achievements of Macau in mm. the past 20 years, very proud. So this is actually a very high, uh, I mean, uh, appraisal of uh, Macau's development in, in the past two decades. And the third, he mentioned that the uh, experience uh, and the features of Macau in implementing the one country, two systems policy mm. should be further explored mm. and summarized, which means that actually the central government is quite satisfied with uh, Macau's implementation of the one country, two systems, and want it to, to uh, I mean, have experience uh, summarized or even, I mean, learned by uh, some other places. Mm. And fourth, uh, I think uh, President Xi mentioned that he's open uh, to, I mean, opinions and suggestions for the development of Macau uh, uh, with uh, all people in, in, in all relevant people in Macau, which means uh, he's, uh, I mean, open to proposals, to, to suggestions, uh, and he's, uh, he, he's willing to, on behalf of the central government, to uh, sort of draw the blueprint for a better tomorrow of Macau together with Macau people. So this is also worthy of attention. It was a very brief speech, but President Xi doesn't do that very often, does he? Making a speech right after um, he steps out of the plane. So, uh, uh, Mr. He, when you look at that speech, what is your major takeaway? Because in that short speech, he made sure to remind people that Macau is a part of China. So anything that Macau has achieved in the past 20 years, is shared by people from all over China, of all ethnic groups. People are jointly proud 
of what Macau has been doing. And um, uh, like Professor Liao mentioned, he talked about the 70th anniversary of yes. the founding of the PRC <coughs> together with his 20th anniversary of Macau's returning to China. Both are happy occasions. Both are celebrated by every Chinese person. Your take on that speech? Yes, I'm. Which strikes me, uh, the President Xi Jinping's uh, short, concise remarks strikes me very much. Uh, the number one point is President Xi Jinping compares the 20th anniversary of Macau's return to the motherland to the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Mm. All the two major events in this year, 2019, which means that the return of Macau is not a local thing, not a less important thing, very important in the country. That's we should. The second point is, looking back, President Xi Jinping is very proud of the remarkable progress mm. of the t past 20 years since Macau's return to the motherland. However, he does not just stay at the satisfaction and mm. the pride, but he says that we need to summarize the experience of the success of one country, two systems, the policies in Macau, which will be very important for our future work. Mm. The third point is we should look forward. Not only looking back and be satisfied, we should know that there's still a long march ahead. The blueprint, the roadmap should be worked together by, all, by us all, by the central government and the, by, the local, by the SAR government of Macau and all the people in Macau. Mm. And for this purpose, he is open to discuss and meet with the various circles of people in Macau to discuss and decide how Macau can develop in the future. Mm. I think it's absolutely important that, that you pointed out um, he wanted to summarize the lessons from one country, two systems in Macau. And when you put it that way, it means that he is open to yes. both experiences and successes and maybe setbacks. That's cr critically important. And when he says he looks forward to talking to people from all walks of yeah. life, who do you think will be uh, most anxious and most excited to talking to him? And what do you think will go into those discussions? I think uh, President Xi Jinping will meet, of course, the government people. Mm. The Macau SAR government, that's for sure. And also for people in the very at very grassroots mm. people. Maybe the, the workers, the, uh, the, uh, the shop assistants, mm. and uh, also the policemen or the teachers mm. or the business communities. Mm. Business communities including the, the businesses and the business managers and the workers. So we'll get together, collect all their ideas, their wishes, their goals, and to integrate into the blueprint of possible uh, cause for the future of Macau. Hearing various and diverse voices is very, very important here. Um, Professor Liao, I want to pick your mind on this also. Will he be talking? Uh, he obviously will be talking with government officials. There are grassroots people there to hear their voices. Um, and it's not just about hearing praise, it's not about just taking in the glory of the moment, he genuinely wishes to hear what people think, people's worries, people's visions for Macau's future. Your thoughts on that? Um, I uh, totally agree with, uh, with your take. Actually, um, the word that President Xi said, he is waiting to uh, communicate with, uh, with uh, the all circles uh, of issues of common concern. I mean, which I think means every kind of uh, issues of common interest and, and, and common concern, be it, be it like uh, social welfare, uh, people's livelihood, or, like, or, or even political agenda. I think this could, w will be a very candid and open discussion. And, and in addition to uh, what Mr. He pointed just now, I, I would want to emphasize that I believe young people would be a focus of, uh, of President Xi's uh, talk uh, during his visit there. Because first, President Xi has always uh, pay, paid much attention to the growth, to the, uh, 
uh, development of young generation. And second, we know that during the past several months, the uh, turmoil in, in Hong Kong, I mean, mm. young generation has played a, a I mean, uh, important role in, in this thing, in this situation, and their concern, and their, I mean, uh, interest cannot be ignored. And if there's somebody that is most concerned with the future of, um, of Macau, of any given place, it got to be the young generations. So I think, I believe President Xi will pay much attention mm. to what the young people think, uh, what their concern, what their hope, what their plan for future development. This could be a, it would be, I, I, I think, a big part of his, uh, his talk and communication with the local communities. And we'll definitely keep watching there. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you on our special coverage and hear your input on this. And now, often called the Vegas of China, Macau is known for its gaming and glitz. The city has more to offer. Fusion cuisine, combining the tastes of China and Portugal, along with popular tourist sites where East meets West, are among some of the things visitors simply can't miss. We wrap up this hour show with a guide to the region's best offerings. I'm Dong Shi in Beijing. Thank you so much for your company.